Praise the name of the Lord. Good to be uh, in the house of the Lord this Tuesday evening. We changed our service, obviously. For those watching online, thank you so much for joining us here. Uh, we are preparing for a wonderful night of testimony, a no wonderful night of praise. How many are ready to give a glory to God? We worshiped him. We praised him in song. Now it's, a, it's time for us to be able to give him praise with the fruit uh, of our lips uh, in the book of uh, Psalms 108. And the first five verses, listen to what the psalmist writes. My heart is fixed, O God. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises, even with my glory. Awake, sultry, and harp. I myself will awake right early. I will give thanks unto you, O Jehovah, amongst all the peoples. And I will sing praises unto you amongst the nations. For your loving kindness is great above the heavens. And uh, your truth reaches to all the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens and the glory above the earth, uh, that, be, that uh, your beloved may be delivered, save with your right hand, and answer us. Praise God. The psalmist wanted to give glory to God. He wanted to give praise to God. And uh, he wanted to give thanks. And that's why we're here tonight. We have so much to be thankful here tonight. How many can say amen? Too many times, as I mentioned before in one of my sermons, that one of the hardest arithmetic that we can find is uh, counting our blessings. Because too many times we forget to do that. And here tonight, we're able to say, God, thank you for what you've done and what you're doing in my life. So as a tradition here at New Harvest, uh, on the service night before Thanksgiving, who wants to start? And uh, give praise unto God first and give him thanks. Me, I want to. I beat you all to it. I beat you all to it because I already knew what I was going to do. I want to give thanks uh, for, number one, the congregation. Thank you so much for your prayers, your faithful support. All those that labor, all those that serve, all those in the classrooms tonight. Uh, you know, thank each and every uh, pastors that we have here tonight their wives. We thank God for each and every one of you, my wife and myself, because you are what makes uh, it uh, a blessing to serve the Lord. And so, come on, give yourselves a great hand. Uh, not that we're glorying in ourselves, but the fact that, you know what, you're clapping for your brother and for your sister and their faithfulness. And so I just wanted to share that and give you a testimony of, of praise that Sunday, I wasn't here obviously, but I was in Anaheim with Pastor Jose Smith and Sister Teresa. They have a wonderful congregation. They have a fantastic facility that they prepared. They fixed it up. I mean, their folks are excited. They, they um, are, are reaching Anaheim and other areas for God. And Nancy and I were so, so blessed to be there Sunday morning. And so I know you all had a great service here Sunday morning. And so I just wanted to share that testimony and start it off tonight. So uh, who is going to follow with the word of thanksgiving? Where are we? Is right there? Okay, Yvette. Is that Woody Sand or Yvette? Both your hands. Okay, go for it. Here's uh, the microphone. I just want to thank God for keeping me 30-some years here in my church. I love you, Pastor and Sister Nancy and all the pastors here. You had talked about interceding for someone, and I started interceding for my niece who had gone MIA for months. She came back home two days ago. And we are so thankful to have her back. She's, she went to church, not our church, but, but, but I'm going to bring her here. And I am very thankful for that. And I'm also thankful for my husband. We're traveling to Vegas tomorrow, so please keep us in prayers. 
Amen. Thank you. We will do that. Praise God. Thank you for that. Hallelujah. Keep you in traveling mercy. Amen. Anyone else want to go ahead and, and give God a, a word of thanksgiving for what he's done in your life? Right over here. We have a microphone over here. We're going to get it to you. Hi, my name is Elia, and I walked through these doors 28 and a half years ago, Amen. very messed up. And here's a, a little taste of my testimony. Lord, I don't know where to start, but you came into my heart, and I'm thankful for the things you did in me. Lord, you gave me love and restored my dignity. I was hopeless and was bound by every sin that was around. I lost all that one could lose in the men, the drugs, the booze. First my job, my home, my son. Lord, how could I have been so dumb? After all that I destroyed, Lord, you came and filled my void. And now I'm set free through the blood you shed for me. Lord, you took away my pain, and I'll never be the same. Thank you, Lord. You've been so good to me. I'm also a breast cancer survivor, and unfortunately, it came back two and a half years ago. They tell me that there's no cure. I'm metastatic stage four, but I receive infusions every three weeks, and it keeps the cancer from spreading, and it's working. And I know I'm going to live to be 100. Yes, that's right. Hallelujah. Give God praise tonight. In Jesus' name, the miracle of healing continues in Elia's life. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. What a wonderfully prepared testimony tonight. You'd put a lot into that one. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I'm going to tell you what, if that doesn't get you going, I don't know what does. Anyone else here tonight wants to jump up and say, yes, Chris. Hello, New Harvest. For you that don't know me, my name is Chris. I'm a recovering meth addict, heroin addict. Uh, a little about my testimony, I've been in and out of the prison my whole life. Uh, God has delivered me from the meth, the heroin. I've been sober two years and like two months. Yes, amen. God has blessed me with a beautiful family. He's restored my family. He's given me hope, you know, something to look forward to. He's blessed me with a job. I got promoted in my job with less than five months. <laughs> so God is just continuing to work in mind in my family's life. I just... Thank the church. Thank Pastor Richard, Pastor Dan. I love all you guys. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. God is such an awesome God. You know, what he does in our lives, how he works in us. Praise God. Anyone else here tonight want to go ahead and right over here to the right in the center? Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, awesome testimonies already. Drug deliverance, cancer is going to be healed, good stuff. I just want to thank God for my salvation. My wife is always telling me, you talk a lot, you know. But from a man that's been delivered from crystal meth, I was, crystal, I was bound by crystal meth many years ago. And the enemy tried to, tried to destroy me, tried to kill me. He should have killed me, but now he can't keep me quiet, you know. Because that joker is going to come at me anyway, so I might as well speak up, right? Amen, huh, Pastor? So God delivered me from, from drugs. My mom, my dad, the church prayed. And, uh, man, I, I couldn't even talk. I was so bound by fear. Um, I was so scared of the enemy. Um, I shared with my parents that when I was doing drugs, that the, the spiritual realm was open. And I seen bad things, and it scared me straight. And it caused me to be so afraid. And as time gone on, I, I keep coming to the church. I kept 
coming to church and kept coming to church and finally realized that God is greater than the enemy, that God was greater than Satan himself because God created him. So I didn't realize that, Pastor, and I was so afraid. I was afraid to talk to people. I was afraid of everything. But you know what? God delivered me from that. He's not giving me a spirit of fear, right. but a spirit of love, power, and what? And of a sound mind. Because that's where my battle was at in my mind. And I want to thank God for that, for delivering me from that and actually caused me to stand. I couldn't talk without the Lord. It's, I'm talking because of what he did in my life. You know, the word of God. You know, Elijah and Elijah where Elijah was trying to go wake up Elijah. Hey, man, there's a lot of enemies out there. And Elijah was just sleeping. Lord, if you want to open up his eyes and let him see. Go back out there, Elijah. He went out there and he came back in. He said, hey, there's a lot of us out there. There's a host of angels and chariots. There's more of us than there is of them. So God is good. I just want to thank God. It's a precious thing to see all your brothers and sisters here. It's an encouragement to me. And so without you, I can't be me, you know. I, I, I see strength and encouragement in everybody. And so I learned how to turn it around and see the best in people. And so I'm still, I'm still learning. You know, I got, the, I got an alley in the back where I live, and there's some crazy folks back there, you know. And so I came from that, so I understand that. I can talk to people that are, you know. So... I'm cool with that because we have the, now we have the power of God in us. We got God's power. We got God's word, his worship. We got plenty of weapons on our side. And so I just want to thank God. I mean, I know the enemy's going to hit me for talking, Pastor. And I used to be scared to talk because that joker would slap me around like, what are you saying that for? I'm like, man, I, da, 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 da. so there I go worshiping and praising God, getting in his presence so I can be safe. But now he's making me into a warrior. Now he's making me into a man of God. And he's going to do that for a lot of us. You know, I thank God for you guys that you're here. It's a blessing to see you. It's a really encouragement to see you. And I thank Pastor Richard and his wife. Like Pastor Dean Braxton was mentioning, it was a good, good service, right? And then on Wednesday, just everything's been, been falling into place. And being thankful... Being thankful, I read that scripture, being thankful is the will of God. And I was like tripping out, and I'm like, wow, if I'm just thankful, I'm in his will. I consider it all joy. You see that word, that word, it helps us. And so it's helped my heart. I couldn't stand right here and talk like this before. I was too scared. My heart's pounding, but God gives us that boldness. God gives us that encouragement. Amen. And have a good Thanksgiving with your families. Keep going forward, and the enemy's going to hit us, but it's okay because we're on the winning side. We're on the winning side, Pastor. God Amen. bless. Amen. Praise God. On the winning side. That's right. Praise the Lord. You know, sometimes even when you're going through the hardest and the darkest part of your, your life, that's when we need to stand up and to give praise to God and give thanks to God. The devil doesn't like that. And so no matter what condition we are in, what's going on in our lives, giving praise and thanks to Jesus breaks strongholds, breaks through and tears down that spirit of fear and uh, the enemy wants to bring into our lives. Anybody else this evening want to give thanks to the Lord all the way in the back? Amen. First, giving honor to God who's the head of all of our life. Um, I have a testimony that's recent. I'm going to be short-winded because just like the brother just said, when we get on the mic and get ready to say what God has done for us, we can go on and on. But I have one, and excuse me if I cry, but he's able. Um, I'll say about a couple of months ago, they had said I had um, uveitis. I was going blind in my, um, my right eye. I was so busy, you know, doing what I was doing and, and not really paying attention to God. And my vision had left inside of the um, Sam's parking lot. I was in a parking lot with my mom. 
And um, I began to panic. And he said to stop panicking, go to the eye doctor. So when I went to the eye doctor, the eye doctor told me that um, people that have this, preferably my culture, there is no um, help. You have to continually take medicine and get shots in your eye. So I did that. Um, I began to see my children and I began to start listening to my mom and begin to pray. I didn't think prayer was as strong as it is. So I began to pray and I began to um, tell God, please, you know, don't take my vision away. Um, you made a blind man see, you raised the dead, you do the impossible. You know, my mom said, if you confess your sins with your mouth, Life and death is in the power of the tongue. I didn't believe it. So I began to, to manifest into my own life. When I went to sleep the uh, next night, I told God, I promise you I'm going to read your word. I promise you I'm going to do what I have to do. When I went to the doctor's office about two months later, the doctor said, uh, and I'm like, what's wrong? What's wrong? I said, what, what, what's, what's wrong? He said, this is weird. I said, what's wrong? He said, it's gone. He said, this don't leave that quick. Amen. <laughs> so recently, I want to say, I have been out of church for a minute. I have two boys. I, was, I came from the street. You know, I leaned on weed and Hennessy more than I leaned on anything. God took the taste out of my mouth. So my son is the reason that I'm here. I'm going to say God first and my son. He told me to come to this church. He loved it, the atmosphere. And I was like, son, you just, you know, how you doubt your children sometimes because they're children. <laughs> but when I walked in the door, it was so much love. So much caring to where you would think you would think it was a Hallmark movie. <laughs> but I, I, I love it. I, I ran home and told my mom, I said, Mom, I can be myself in this church. I can praise them in this church, and they don't look at me funny. Yeah. And I'm going to make this real short because just this happened last week. Um, God told me that the enemy is going to fight you because I, I have things that I need you to do. So he gave me Job. And one thing that everybody, all of us are going through in this room is our livelihood. The devil was playing with our livelihood because he thinks this earth is not our home. And he said, you got to be able to get everything taken away from you and still love me. God wants us to love him and to turn back to him. So as I was riding home from church, listening to my, riding home from work, excuse me, listening to my gospel music, and I'm going to be quiet. I pulled in the driveway, and my right arm began to swell up like a cartoon character. I hurried up and called my mom, but before I called her, the voice said, trust me, this is a test, demoni. And I didn't understand that at first because I was looking in the flesh. So I called my mom. She said, baby, go ahead and go to um, emergency. When I ran the room, I looked at my kids, and I, I was home from work. I'm like, it's probably going there. I'm going to put a hot towel on it. I'm cool. My brain said, no, go to emergency. When I went to emergency, they looked at it, and, and they was thinking it was I hit something, I bumped something. I said, no, I didn't. They went and did every test known to men to see what was going on. They said, ma'am, you can't leave the hospital. You have a blood clot in your arm. They said, that's not normal. You get blood clots from below. So... I began to start crying in there to the doctor, and my spirit did some type of uplift 
to where he said, don't look at what you was going on. He said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. He said, trust me in your time of testing. So I began to worship and pray in an emergency room and in a bathroom, something I never did in my life. So they kept me. As I was in the room and I began to stay in the room and just sit, first I was sitting in pain because they said, you died from a blood clot. He said, not you, my child. Praise me while you're sitting in this bed. That was my time for him to keep me from myself. A lot of us be around so much chatter in our everyday life that we don't take the time to take heed to his voice. And I was one of them kids, job, vaccine, everything, mine all over the place. And guess what? Three days later, they walked in a room and couldn't find the blood clot. Amen. Amen. <laughs> So I just want to say to myself and to everybody in here, Thanksgiving is every day. For us to be thankful for the little things and the time and loving on each other. I want to say happy Thanksgiving and thank you to everybody. You guys show so much love when people come in here. It is a, this is a house of love. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much. Praise God. Miracle working God. That's who we serve. Praise the Lord. Wonderful testimonies. Man, this is so awesome. We got to do this all the time. All right. Right over here. Go ahead. Sister Angie. Yeah. Uh, first, I want to thank God for my salvation and for you, Pastor and Sister Nancy. For always being faithful and always being there for us. And I love my church and every, all my brothers and sisters. Um, my testimony is that God has been so good to me this past year. Uh, he saw us through when George passed away. You know, things came up that, you know, you know, you. You're going to do things when somebody passes away, but you're never prepared. You're never really prepared. But um, God gave us favor, blessed us, and provided for every need and even more. And I'm so grateful for my church because they came through for us also. Um, blessed us, um, helped us with a lot of stuff, and um, God, God has been blessing me from there on. I just see these blessings just coming, and I, I sit in my place, and I cry, and I cry, because I can't believe what he's, how he's blessing me, and lately, um, I received that check in the mail that I was told I wasn't going to get. I got it. God gave it to me. And my next one is that next month I have one car payment left. And, Amen. And I'm so excited and I'm so grateful for God to be able to meet my need to see this moment happen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Thank you so much. God is the provider of every single need that might come across us. Yes, right over here in the back. Hello, my name is uh, Richard Aragon. Hey, Richard. And uh, I just want to thank God for my salvation. I've been here over 40 years. And this is my home. Just like I always say, till the wheels fall off. I'll be here. But, you know, I thank God right now with all my heart and soul because I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him. That's right. You know, God, he gave me all the desires of my heart. He gave me a job at the railroad. He let me get a chance to retire. But, you know, the devil's there. He's around. And he tried to take me out. 
But you know what? God had other plans. That's right. You know, and uh, just like my sister was saying, I'm in her same position. You know, they did what they had to do. They took the cancer and all that. But they said that there's still some there, and they say that I'm stage four. But I don't claim that. I Amen. claim victory in my father. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Because he's brought me through a lot of things. I got the COVID right after I got all that. And he's seen me through that too. Yep, yep. You Amen. know, and uh, I just thank all my brothers and my sisters here and my pastors for all your prayers because they didn't go in vain. I'm here today to let you know that I love you guys with all my heart. And I thank my Pastor Richard and Sister Nancy and all my other pastors here because God is so good, man. Mm. And now I praise God every chance I get because I know I got my son out there, but I know he's going to be here serving God with me. Yes. And my daughter too. That's right. Because I stand in his word and I just love him so much. And I just want to let everybody know to have a good Thanksgiving and to let you know, God is number one, man. And don't you ever forget it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Fighting for Jesus. Amen. Fighting through. Praise God. Amen. Holy Ghost in this place right now, boy. Anyone, anyone else tonight? Because if you don't give it any testimonies, then... Um, Somebody's going to have to come up here and sing. You don't want to hear somebody don't know how to sing, sing. So come on, let's keep it going. <laughs> right over here. Um, hello. I would like to thank God, first of all, for my salvation and my church. And um, I want to give a testimony about my son, Elijah. Most of the people that know him know that he's very energetic and he's always um, jumping around and doing all these things. And at the beginning of the year, he got sick. And um, we went to the emergency and his blood test was really bad and I was really scared. And I was still praying and trying to figure it out. Like, because of COVID, I was by myself with him. I couldn't have my husband and there was a lot of miscommunications and everything. But when he went through the CAT scan, they told me, oh, he has probably his appendix, so we're going to take it out. So I'm like, okay. So I was praying and everything went well. He came back, and then the doctor called me and said, your son has a mass on the left side. And I was just shocked. Like, I'm like, oh, my God. But I started crying because I was just, I felt a little bit helpless. But I realized that I was like, Janita, you know, you... You have faith in God, so you need to kind of like put it together and, and, you know, just keep listening. But the doctor told me, I cannot give you any more explanations, so you need to wait for the specialist. And that same moment, within a couple of hours, the specialist called me and says, you know, I saw the pictures and I want to do another surgery tomorrow. So we went, we were transported via ambulance to a different hospital. <laughs> and uh, when I was there, you start seeing that you are in the cancer unit, but you, know, you don't realize it until you start looking at people around you. And I have to say that there were so many brothers and sisters in the church that were praying for us, praying for my son, texting me. It was just such a relief just to understand that there's people that even when you feel weak, they're lifting up your hands and praying with you and seeking God with you, even at a distance. <laughs> So the doctor was super nice, and he said, Janita, um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at everything very detailed. He says, I've seen this kind of mass before, and, but I don't understand why it has calcifications on it. And he told me, well, we're going to do the surgery and find out, but I need you to authorize me that if we have to cut part of some of his organs, it will be okay with you. Uh, we're going to do the best that we can. And to make the story long short, he went through surgery. It was a four-hour surgery. And within an hour, he calls me back. And I was scared. Like, I look at my phone. I'm like, oh, my God, that's the doctor. Something happened. And he goes, I don't want you to be scared. Everything is okay. So he went to the room and 
took pictures and sat with me and he said, Janita, I don't know how to explain this, but this mass is dead. There was nothing live there. Um, <laughs> thank God. And they were able to remove it very easily, very quickly. And um, my boy was back to his usual self <laughs> the next day. Um, but I just want to also say thank you for this church, for every single person that has been so nice to me and my family. Um, I came to this church 11 years ago, and it has been the best thing we ever done as a family. Thank you. Amen. Praise Happy God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Man, God keeps coming through. Praise God. By faith, by faith, in the name of Jesus, wonderful testimonies. Anyone else? Right over here, yes. Oh, my wife. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I'm not ignoring you. You go first. No, you go first. I'm going to get um, it when I get home. Excuse me. I have a raw heart. I lost my mom a year ago, but I'm thankful for my mom and dad which is George and Helen, who have been here for since it was Victory Chapel. <laughs> so I grew up in church. And I am thankful that they stayed serving God and they didn't get it up on me and our family and being a, I'm that prodigal daughter that came back. And I'm just thankful that they didn't give up. They're an example. They were strict and I used to complain, like, why are you so strict? Being a pastor's kids, the other pastor's kids get to do it and go there. And my mom would be like, they're not my kid. And you're going to talk about me. I would rather that you would talk and say that I was strict and didn't let you do those things. And I'm just thankful for their example. And for all you guys here too, seeing you guys and those that have stuck it out, it's a blessing, you know, because it is hard. But... Going through this, I know, like, I just have to keep going forward to make it to heaven and live, right? Amen. And that's what, I've never done this, but I wanted to say thank you to my mom and dad for standing firm and standing for what was right, regardless of what everybody said. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. Wonderful parents, I tell you that. Praise God. Thank you so much. For that beautiful testimony. We so appreciate that. Praise God. Sister Nancy. <laughs> I'm kind of embarrassed because this is a selfish testimony. But um, when my husband and I uh, celebrated our 50th anniversary, he had um, gotten me a few pieces of jewelry and I'm a typical woman you know it's where did you get the money and you shouldn't have spent it on me because I I just wear costume jewelry but um he told me I've been saving and you know and that but uh what happened about two days ago we were in and out of the stores and I had to put my mask on and take it off for stores and on and off and um i i don't like to do that like everyone else and so what i did was clipped it on my um earring and so when i pulled the mask off i think i threw it you know my earring with it and so i went to put it on and I looked and I told Richard, guess what? My earring was inside my mask and I threw it out. And I don't know where. And so he kind of looked at me like, I want to kill you right now. <laughs> I wouldn't even I look do at that. him. Can I do that? We're going to have ourselves a discussion <laughs> yes. here right now. And so anyway, he's a typical man. Anyway, so... I, I wouldn't even look his way because I was so, so mad. And I just was like, let's get in the store. And I was walking and I was walking fast. And then uh, when we came out, 
I got back in the car. I really wanted to start looking all over and looking in my purse, and I just thought, you know what? I'm not going to do this. I'm just not going to play this little game of looking for it and going crazy over this. I'm just going to, for you know, not forget it, but I just started praying. And I said, okay, God, I really said it just like this. I said, you can do things and bring things with Kevin Zaday. He, he was up on a plane, and he told everybody, oh, I forgot this. I put it on my table. And I'll say, but God's going to bring it to me. His angels will bring it and put it on that table. So, you know, there you are. And in, like this, it appears on the table. So I just told God, I said, you know, I'm so mad right now. I'm so mad about what I've done. So, you know, find that ring and put it somewhere. And so, anyway, I, I just started telling God what to do. <laughs> I was so mad. And um, we got home, went in the house. I took my one earring off, went to put it in the box that, that I put it in opened it up, and my ring was there. I mean, my earring was there. And so I was so excited. I was, oh, my God, he created a miracle. But I didn't want to tell anybody or say it because our bodies are more important than an earring. But to me, God did it for me. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. That was a good testimony. Praise the Lord. Because she knew it was going to be another 10 years before I could buy another earring. So God knew that. <laughs> okay, where? In the back. Yes. I first of all want to thank God for placing me in this church. Um, I've been here for a long, long time since I brought up all my five kids here. And my thankfulness this time is for the house that God has blessed me with. I've been praying for two years. We've been moving from place to place. And finally, in his timing, uh, we moved in last month into our place that I have my grandkids with me, my daughter, Ursula. Um, <laughs> My son, Rudy and Ruben, and they're with their kids, and um, we're just so blessed. I mean, the house needs a lot of work. It's the house that my dad bought my mom when they first got married in 1960, and um, I feel my dad's presence all over the house. It's, it's a total blessing. I couldn't let this night go without thanking God and giving him all honor and glory for working out in his timing and blessing my family. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Um, yes, right here in front. I want to thank the Lord for my salvation. I've been with him for 40 years. I thank God that he answered my prayer right here. I want to thank God for giving me my son-in-law, him, Marlene, and, Chris, and Daniel. And I want to thank the Lord because... You know, when you're faithful in your ties, you, you, you never, you know, like we had to move. And I didn't know where I was going to get the money, right? And I thanked the Lord because I, I said, God, you're going to have to prove yourself in this. In Malachi, you say to come, that to trust in you with all my heart. And I'll tell you, you know, that they were saying that you were going to get your income tax. A deposit came in my account, and then I said, God, I need another. Uh, you know what I need, God. And he put another $1,000 in my account. I called the bank, and they said, I don't know where it came from, <laughs> but I do. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That's what God did, does. When you're faithful in your tithes, he takes care of you. That's right. He does. And he gave us a home to live in, and I thank the Lord for that. Amen. Praise God. Wonderful. Great testimony. Amen. God knows. God knows every area. Yes. Who else? Right over here. Yes. 
Karina. Um, I just want to thank God for um, my salvation and just for his mercy and his grace on my life. I, I, I grew up in this church and I don't have this crazy testimony, but I know what God has spared me from. And I've been spared from so much junk and so much that the world tries to offer you, but I know that um, it's only found in God. And I just wanna say thank you to all the pastors. Um, I, I know we don't say it enough, but I really appreciate you guys, each and every one of you and your wives, because I think a lot of times we, we forget that you're human too. And um, if it's hard for us, I, I can't even imagine you guys. And I, I'm just so grateful for this church and for this school. My gosh, I'm so thankful for this school because, Amen. because this school and these teachers and the curriculum here have taught me to not only be a hard worker, but just to be in my right mind. and and just to know who I am in Christ. And of course I go through my own things and I'm not perfect, but anytime I'm facing a trial, I remember what I was taught here. And even from Air Force and different um, classes, I, I keep those things with me. So just, I just wanna encourage you, if you're new here, you're meant to be here and God brought you here for a reason and don't ever feel like you don't belong because you do. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy because God has so much for you here. And I just wanna say thank, I thank God so much just for his faithfulness and for, um, thank you Pastor Richard for allowing me to serve in this church. And um, that's it, thank you. Amen, praise God. You know, it's so exciting when you hear young people who grew up in church and came through our ministries and stuff, and they're serving the Lord, being, being an encouragement back. What you sow, you reap. Amen. And, you know, thank you so much. P praying parents, uh, it's what it's all about. And, and thank God for um, mom and dads that do that for their kids. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Who else? Someone else? Right over here. Hello, everyone. My name is Christy Cat. For those of you who don't know me, I'm actually fairly new the second time around. About 14 years ago, I had the honor and the privilege and the blessing of going to the women's home here at the time. Yoveta was the leader, and I also had the honor and the privilege of being in attendance to her wedding with Oscar, which was such a blessing. And um, the Lord has just preserved me. I have 14 years sober now off of drugs and alcohol due Praise to the women's God. home. Um, yeah, I tell everyone about the women's home here. It really changed my life, and I can't say enough good things about it. Such a bummer that it's not here anymore, but Lord only knows if, you know, we'll be able to bring it back. But since I've come back, um, I have just been so blessed to rekindle that friendship with Yoveta and Lawan and some of the other ladies here. It's been about six months now, and I'm just so blessed by all your guys' ministries, the spiritual class on Thursday nights, um, Celebrate Recovery on Tuesday nights. When I first came back, I was going to church here like four times a week because I just couldn't get enough of it. I love this church so much. I'm so blessed by all of you guys. And for me, it's an honor that I get to be here, that I get to come here and that you guys had a women's home. So I just want to thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you for that testimony. Praise God. Wow. Awesome. Boy, these are exciting. These are good. Well, all of them are, are blessing. Anyone else? Anyone else here this evening that wants to give praise to God? Praise the Lord. Oh, I know there's people. I know. Yep, right over here. Angel. Yeah, I'd like to thank the Lord for, um, first of all, Pastor Richard and Sister Nancy, thank you for everything you've done for our family. People that know us realize that we had our hands full, and you guys came through in a humongous way. 
You guys been there for our kids. And thank you for the New Harvest Christian School. All the all the staff, all the supervisors, the volunteers. It's not just a school, but it's a ministry. Uh, the first time that I came, Yovetta asked me if I could do the sound because there was nobody up there. I was sitting up there and I got into tears. I couldn't stop crying because I seen our kids uh, leading worship. They were running the whole, the whole um, service. And that's what parents' prayers are, that our kids would build a relationship with God and fall in love with God and, and uh, represent God in an honorable way. And what a blessing to be there. Uh, ever since then, I had the, the privilege of working with, uh, with a lot of the youth, the younger people. And I look at service, and I see that all our kids are there. And what a blessing to see the fruit of our faithfulness and our perseverance and everything we've done over the years. It is because of everybody here that's poured love into our kids and even those that are not our kids. You know, the Bible says that, that he'll put the... the Father, listen to families, and the kingdom of God is a family. And thank you guys for everything you've done for not only my kids, but every kid that comes through this door. And I want to thank Pastor Reggie and the congregation. They've been there for my brother. He was uh, diagnosed with cancer, stage four, and uh, he was deteriorating. And he had like probably 30-something years, maybe 40 years of unstable uh, Christianity. And he never walked into the blessings of God, and he suffered because of it. He ended up in prison, but Pastor Reggie and the congregation was there for him. I took him to men's class, and as he walked in there, he was, he was sick. He couldn't really walk that well. Um, the men prayed for him, and after the prayer, I couldn't recognize him anymore. I had to do a double take. It's like, is that my, is that my brother speaking? And... God did something incredible that night in men's class, my brother's life. He became the person that God always intended him to be, and we had six months with him. We flew our father in from Mexico, my nephew, his son. They were estranged from Colorado. He was able to, to make peace with his entire family. He moved into my brother-in-law's house for hospice. Everybody came to his side, visited him, even the military Buddies from uh, Korea, 1977 and 78, flew from the East Coast. And they gave them a yearbook from their unit. They gave them a military hat with their unit on it. They showed them love. What a blessing. It took decades, but God's faithful. And thank you guys for being there for everybody. Thank you, Pastor Richard, Sister Nancy. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much for that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Anyone else here this evening? Oh, right over here. Do we have? See hands raised? Right here. Yes. Hi. I just, I didn't want to let the night go by without thanking Pastor Richard and Sister Nancy, um, the other pastors here in the church. Um, I, I sort of grew up here as a little girl with my brother Reuben and Nora. And, um, but I, I actually got saved and was, you know, uh, served God with Pastor Jimmy and Sister Cindy. And I just, I'm just blessed to see you guys still here. Just some of the couples here. Um, Pastor Matt, Pastor Dan, Sister Christina. Um, I walked away almost 20 years ago and I didn't want to have anything to do with New Harvest, but God was calling me back here. I'm, I'm grateful for, I call you guys strong pillars in the church. You guys matter. I've been nothing but blessed coming back here. And I'm just grateful. I graduated here at New Harvest. I came here my senior year at, at the Azusa Learning Center. But you guys had the ceremony here, and I'm grateful and I'm blessed to have my my three younger children here. You know, the word, the word of the Lord says, you know, you'll be saved and your whole household will be saved. And I know my teenagers, they don't understand and they fight me to come to church, but they are going to come because that's where they need to be. 
Amen. I was Amen. raised here, and so I'm just really grateful for, you know, the strong pillars, you know, just being loving. Sister Christina, just, just come. And I was, like, so afraid or, and, you know, just so messed up to come back. But I'm just grateful for, you know, the, some, some of the sisters and the brothers. And um, recently, my mom had a heart attack. A couple years ago, my mom, you know, had a heart attack, and um, she happened to have another one uh, two weeks ago. So I was asking some of the sisters to pray for my mom. It was just, it scared me a lot to see her, um, some of the blood flow, you know, if your heart's not working right, won't go to your brain properly, and my mom was not in her right mind, and I was just really, really scared to see my mom that way. And I was just asking people to pray for her. And, you know, she's home now. Thank you, Jesus. And just continue to pray for her. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads for a few moments this uh, evening.